What's up rally fans? So if you watch my channel, you know I like rally cars. And I actually discovered this, uh, well, I was sold on this model after watching another channel called The Daily Dose. If uh, you go into my subscriptions, you'll see his channel there. He's always doing like what's coming up, you know, with like Hot Wheels and uh, other brands, including premium brands. He like searches the internet, I guess, for, you know, pre-orders and stuff like that. But he actually did buy this model and I saw it and I thought it was pretty interesting because it actually has the Camel Cigarettes branding on it. And I actually don't have a more modern uh, Gallant. I only have like the really old classic ones from TLV and uh, I think Konami. So I thought I'd give this a shot, right? Let's take a look. Uh, so I seem to be collecting more Para 64s. I think for the price they do a good job. Uh, they're not super expensive. They're not, you know, they're not... They're not cheap by any means, but uh, I think you get a good good amount of detail for the money. I almost feel like I, I would rather not have to pay for this crystal box, though. They're they're it's a nice box and all, but you know that is something you're paying for when you buy this model. Whereas you know other brands would just give you a cardboard box, like Auto World. Uh, and I kind of like that because it, it kind of makes me want to display them outside of the box. But uh, these little crystal boxes take up space. So if I display this car outside the, you know, box, I still have to store this box somewhere else, right? So that's why I don't really like them. Unless the thing has a lot of delicate parts that would, you know, potentially be damaged. Okay, so I was actually lucky enough to find this image, although I don't know why the person's got it at this angle but maybe it'll actually work out better for us obviously the wheels don't match but uh looking at the front end there you know pause it it uh hmm i think it looks pretty close mirrors i guess right all right so here's another image and the license plate matches but for some reason it's got a different livery on it but if you look at the license plate it matches and this time around the wheels do match so yeah that looks like the rear of that car I think the wing could be a little bit higher on the model hmm okay so the Glant VR4 VR4 means viscous real-time four-wheel drive um, it's the top-end Glant it's an all-wheel drive Glant and they use them for racing and I guess this is supposed to be the seventh generation, which would be the E84A or E74A body code. I don't know what the differences are there, though. It's supposed to have a twin turbocharged 2 liter V6 engine up here. And so it could do 0 to 60 in 6.5 seconds, reach 140 miles per hour. And I guess that engine is supposed to make around 230, 240 horsepower. It's supposed to be running on 15 inch wheels. All right, so that's what I learned. All right, so let's look at those wheels, man. There's something wrong here. Oh, it's the axles are bent. Because you can see it's not spinning concentric to the wheel well. Okay, I mean, look at that rear one. It's like it got stepped on. There, it's not so bad. But yeah, uh, before it looked like it was too far backwards. Hmm. Yeah, see how much, there's so much gap here, but not in the back. But if I spin it, maybe it's better. Hmm. Well, luckily it's screwed together, so I can try to fix it. If I have to, I'll even sand out or drill out the hole there for the axle so it can move forward a little bit. So that is the beauty of the screwed together base. So that's one of the reasons why I like this company. It doesn't have any treads or anything like that, but that doesn't bother me because I'm just gonna, I'm never gonna see the treads usually when I just display it like that, right? Okay, so looking at the sponsorship here, Ooh, this is a decal. You can see the air bubble right here in the door crease. So that's too bad. That number 9 is a decal. I wonder if the camel thing is too. Yeah, I think it is. Yep, you can see the air gap around the uh, fuel filler door. So that's too bad. I didn't see that in uh, the other review. So this is going to become problematic in a few years. It's going to dry out. It's going to crack. If I ever touch it again, I'm going to lift off the decal. So it's too bad. I really wish companies would not use decals. Okay, well, the door handles are sticking up. They're painted black. That looks pretty good. Um, the mirrors, yeah, well, this one does seem like it's really too far set in. Right? Look, look how 
this side looks okay. It's nice to see there's a reflective sticker or something in there. But this one's like crushed inwards. Doesn't, doesn't look that different from the top view, but there's definitely something going on with that mirror. Like it's not aligned properly. So that's too bad as well. Okay, so we got some of the black printing here. Alright, I guess that seems alright, but it's a little weird. You see, I can see a line there. Is that the roll cage or the window casting? What's it look like on this side? No, it's the same. Oh, the yeah, that is the roll cage, so never mind. I thought it was like some sort of part of the casted window, but no, it's the roll cage back there. Okay, there's a little black uh, mud guards here. I think, yeah, they, I think they're part of the black base. Okay, they're not super thick. They're not bad. Yeah, look at that front wheel. See, it's it's so far set backwards. Hmm. All right. Okay, let's go to the back here. There are some plastic lights, but they're really dark. They're not really translucent at all. I kind of feel like a lighter red would have been better, but at certain light angles, you can see that it is translucent. It is great that the license plate actually matches the real car, so that's nice. And then, yeah, it's interesting that it it's great to see the actual camel sponsorship. You know, I, I don't like how Kyosho will censor their models. They'll just remove the sponsorship and the car looks naked. Okay, but it is a decal, I think. Yeah, this roof one is all a decal. You can see a little bit of the wrinkliness. I hopefully the camera will catch it. See, it's a little wrinkly there. But here, it's smooth, a little wrinkly. You can see the clear around the lettering. So definitely decals. Okay, well, I mean, the decals are well applied. I am noticing there's some sort of paint contaminant right there on the wing, or that's may maybe where it's uh, trimmed off the, the molding sprue right there. Okay, silver roll cage inside looks all right. This exhaust tip is just blanked off black plastic. Uh, look at the photograph, it looks actually accurate. It's just a raw steel exhaust tip. Okay, no brakes on the Power 64s. They're not super expensive models, so that, that makes sense. Uh, let's take a look at the interior. Black interior, the rear is gutted out. There's no rear seat, so that seems accurate to a race car. And then uh, there's never any additional like gauges or decals to my understanding. Again, it's not a super expensive model, so I'm okay with that. Racing seats, it looks like. So, yeah, that's good. I mean, it is nice that at least it's a silver roll cage. That's better than usual from Power 64 as far as the amount of details go. The wiper blades are raised black, uh, molded in, but they look good. Hmm. Okay, well, all right, I guess we'll compare it to a couple other uh, models now. So these old TLVs, this is a Colt Gallant, although I don't know what year. I didn't put a sticker on the year of it, though. Same with this one. This is a Colt Gallant with a slightly different front and rear ends there. Uh, now, this is a Colt Gallant GTOMR. Uh, so this one is made by Konami, and it's a, a coupe version. It looks like a miniature uh, Ford Mustang. The designer of this went to a school in California, and uh, I think he was influenced by a lot of Western design culture and brought it back. Okay. Uh, I think the Gallant is overshadowed by the fact that the Mitsubishi Lancer has, you know, it's just a more successful rally car. So this is a Lancer 3, Evo 3, and it's made by Inno 64. It's a fantastic model. So it's a whole different price category, but uh, boy, it has the details to back it up, I think. So, okay. But this is not the Inno 64 show today, this is the Para 64 show. 
So let's let this go for a spin on its own. All right, so in summary, I think it's a great model uh, factoring in the price. You know, you do get the plastic headlights, taillights, you got some uh, paint in the side mirrors, and uh, you have good enough details on the interior. And the one of the big pluses for me is the fact that the base is screwed together because I can go and I can fix that wheel alignment issue, you know, so. And if this was a road car, I could, I would probably even paint the interior to a much, a little brighter color so you could see the details. So that's why I like this brand. Uh, I was complaining about the whole crystal case thing before, but maybe I should take that back because if this thing has decals on it, I don't ever want to touch this model again because those things are going to peel off. So maybe I actually will put this back in the, the plastic case it came in. So if for some random miraculous reason someone that makes a these models tunes into this channel ideally you'll just use tampo prints and then you don't have to give someone a plastic case that they're gonna potentially just throw into the trash and end up in our sushi so that would be nice okay well anyways I'm gonna continue to buy power 64s I think uh, for the price they're they're a pretty good model there's nothing glaringly wrong with them uh, the only thing missing really are the brake systems, but again, uh, for the for the price bracket, I don't really expect brake systems, so I'm good. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you checking it out, and hopefully, I'll have a couple more rally cars to come in the future. All right.